Hello everybody and welcome to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I wrote a Python script that can brew me a coffee using the Internet of Things. Now, the Internet of Things is a bunch of things, devices, sensors, motors, whatever they may be that are connected to the Internet and that can be controlled by system or software. So in this case, I have this little device. It's called a Fingerbot, and I'll try to get in focus here so you can see it. It has this one mechanical part and motion. So if I press the button here, you can see it should go down and then come back up. So I've actually attached this to my coffee maker, connected it to the Toya Smart IoT platform, which is actually the sponsor of this video, and then use some Python code to control this. So I'm going to show you exactly how this works in this video. I'll also be showing you how to connect some other smart devices that are IoT enabled, like a light strip. I have a light strip that's actually in my door frame, and I'll show you kind of how to change the colors and all of that. Anyways, this is a very cool video. You don't even have to have these devices to follow along. You can actually create a virtual version of them. And everything I'm going to show you here is completely free. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm on the computer now and we're going to go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do, though, is just explain to you more in depth what the Internet of Things is. So the Internet of Things describes the network of physical objects, the things that are embedded with sensors, software and other technologies for the purpose of connecting and exchanging data with other devices and systems over the Internet. So these devices could be ordinary household objects or sophisticated industry tools. And a complete IoT system could include devices connected to the cloud, software deployed in a cloud environment, apps and web user interfaces. And all of these things would connect together using the cloud and using the Internet of Things to actually, you know, control different devices and achieve some task. So that leads me now to what the Toya Smart IoT platform is. So this platform is designed for developers to make IoT easier, the Internet of Things easier. So the platform has kind of two main goals. The first goal is to connect hardware to the cloud to make it IoT enabled to allow you to do that. And the second goal is to allow you to utilize connected devices and build a cloud SaaS, so software as a service, based on those connected devices and cloud services. So the Tuya IoT platform provides tools to free developers from everything below the app layer, which allows developers to focus on their application and product development without distraction. Now, I've been using this platform. I messed around with it before this video. It's very easy to use, very intuitive. And you're going to see as we go through here, it's pretty simple to actually connect these physical devices and start controlling them from software, like in our case, Python scripts. So now what I want to do is bring us off the computer quickly, and I want to show you the physical devices that I'm using here, just give you a quick walkthrough of kind of how they work, and then we'll hop back on here. We're going to have to make an account on the Toya platform, and once we've kind of done all of the initial setup and authorization, then we'll hop into the Python code, and I'll show you how to connect these physical devices and how to actually control them. So as I was mentioning, I'm going to show you the physical components that I'm going to be using here and just kind of walk you through how they work. So this here is the finger bot that I showed you at the beginning of the tutorial. Come on, camera focus in here has that one mechanical movement piece, which is this arm right here. You can kind of see it. I'll, I'll demo it going up and down. Now you can control this from Python code from the IoT to go any percent up and down that you want and to either stay down or stay up or whatever. Now, this is actually a wireless device. It does have a charging port at the back and then obviously an on and an off switch, but you don't need to have this plugged in for it to work. It's wireless. Now, the way that this actually connects to the Internet is by using this. Now, this is not a wireless device. If this will focus in the camera here, this does need to be plugged in. OK, so there you go. So this here is a Bluetooth bridge that connects the finger bot with it. OK, so this needs to be plugged in. It has a little HDMI port right here, comes with a cable and a USB port. And you just need to plug this in somewhere so that it has power. And then you need to actually connect it to an iPhone app, which I'm going to show you in a second. Now, it also has kind of this on button at the back. Come on, focus up here. Uh, and that's what you do to put this into pairing mode. So I'll show you how that works later, but I just wanted to show you that what I'm using is the bridge. So this kind of like Bluetooth gateway, and then I am using the finger bot. I'll leave links to both of these in the description down below. And then the last thing I'll show you is that the finger bot, this little plastic piece right here, if we can focus in, this comes off. You can kind of see where it slides out and you can replace it with other things like this. So, for example, this is a ring. 
I also have something that has like a little sticky pad on it that goes on there. It's very, very small. You can kind of see it. And then I have a few other ones. I have a little shorter like one that goes in here and then this is the uh there's a longer one that goes in here as well there's a little accessory package oops just bumped the mic there that you can get to put into the finger bar. so those are the two devices that i'm using to get the coffee brewing aspect of this video working however tuya has over 310,000 SKUs of different products within 1100 different categories and they service over 220 countries so there's a ton of different products that work you can buy these products on amazon you can get all kinds of other products that connect with Tuya. And what I'm going to show you here is not just specific to the finger bot. The controls for it will be specific, but following along with this will show you how to connect any other product as well. So I apologize for all of the detailed explanation of everything here before we get started. Just want to make sure you guys are on track. You know the hardware I'm using. You know the basics of how it works. Now we can start actually creating a Tuya account, connecting our devices, and then eventually getting into the Python code. All right, so we're back on the computer and now we're going to get started with the actual setup steps. The first thing we need to do is create an account with Tuya. So what we're going to do is go to the IoT platform. So I'm going to press that button from this website. All of the links here will be in the description and we need to sign up. So I'm going to sign up and create an account. Once I'm back, I will log into that account and then I will continue from there. All right, so I've just created my account and you can see the first thing I'm brought to here is whether or not I'm an individual developer or an organization. Now, in this case, I'm an individual developer. So what I'm gonna do is press set now and just select individual developer. So I am an individual developer. You don't need to select this right away. You can select this later in the setup process, but it's simple, so I'm gonna do it now. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we're going to do is go to this cloud tab here and we're gonna go to development. Now, the first thing that we really need to do is we need to actually create a new cloud development project. But before we can do that, we need to select what edition of Toya Smart IoT we're going to use. So you can see here there's a ton of different plans. We're just going to go with the trial edition. This is completely free. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm just going to go through this process here. So I select trial edition. I don't need to add any notes. I'm going to buy that. Don't worry. You don't need to put in any credit card information. It's completely free. I'm going to press submit order, and then I should have the trial edition as my plan. Okay, so there we go. I now have the trial edition. So what I'm going to do is go back to the IoT platform here, and I am going to now go back to cloud and go to development. All right, so now that we're on this page, you can see we're using the trial edition. And the first thing we're going to do is create a cloud project. So for the name, what I'm going to do is enter coffee because that's kind of the main thing that we're trying to do here. I could add a description. I'm not going to add one for right now. For the industry, I'm going to go with smart home because this is something that's in my home, but you could select the appropriate industry. And then for the deployment method, sorry, development method, not deployment method, we're going to go with custom. Now you can read the detailed descriptions if you want, but in our case, custom is just the best. That's the one that we're going to use. And then the availability zone is going to be all of the areas in which we want this to be able to operate. So in our case, I want this to work in America. That's because I'm located in Canada. So I'm going to select America. But if you wanted this to work in other countries, other regions as well, then you would select China, Europe, India, whatever you guys know, you can select the correct, uh, correct area. And in this case, actually, I'll go with Eastern America because I'm kind of in the East Coast of America as well. So yeah, we'll go with those two. All right. So now that I have that, I'm going to press create and this should create the project for me. All right, so after we do that, it brings us to this page that says Authorize API Services. Now, there's a bunch of different APIs that we can use within the Toya Cloud IoT platform, but we need to authorize them. So there's already seven that are added to our project here. We have authorization, industrial general device control, a bunch of other ones. You don't have to really understand what they are, but make sure you leave these in here. We do need to add one more, though, before we go any further. Now, the one that I'm looking for here is industry project client service API. So let's look for that industry client, industry project client service. OK, this is the one that I want. So I'm going to press that right there and it brings it over here. And then there's a few other ones that I want as well. One that I want is LBS. This is location based services. So I'm going to add that in. And then I also want the weather service. Now you'll see why we're going to use this in a second, but pretty much I'm going to have my light strip adjust its color based on the temperature outside. And so I just want to add these in right now so we don't need to do it later. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and press authorize. So now that we've completed the authorization, we're brought to this project configuration page. Now, this is where we need to make an asset. 
Now, an asset is something that's going to be accessible by a user. We're going to set up that user right here. And this asset is going to contain all of the different devices that a specific user can control. So it's very important that you remember the phone number or email and the password that you set here. So in this case, for the asset name, what I'm going to do is I am going to set it as room A. You can set this as really anything that you want. Actually, I'm going to change mine. I'll just set it as a main asset. And then for the account type, you can choose either email or phone number. Doesn't matter, but you need to remember what it is that you put in here. So in this case, I'm going to go with phone number. I'm going to fill in these two fields and then go to the next step, because obviously I don't want you to see my phone number or my password. So I've just completed that last form there. And now I'm brought to a page that looks like this, where I have my project, which is coffee. And then I have my access ID slash my client ID and my access secret slash client secret. Now, these are two important pieces of information. Don't worry, they won't go away. You can get access to them later. But we're going to need these when we actually start making API calls. OK, so the first thing we're going to do here now that we've created our asset is we're going to add some devices. So we're going to go to devices and this is where we're going to connect our bridge. So that Bluetooth bridge and then our finger bot. And then obviously, in this case, we have a light strip. So I'll connect the light strip as well. But in your situation, you might just have one single device to connect. So in add an asset, what you're going to do is press add device. And then notice there's two options here. You have add device with IoT device management app. And then you have add virtual device. So if you're following along with this and you don't have a physical device, what you can do is press add virtual device and then you can select device and add it virtually. This simply simulates the physical device. So if you're testing out development or something or you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can do that without having to own the product. Now, in this case, I have a physical product. So the way I'm going to do this is with the IoT device management app. Now, notice it brings up a QR code here. So what I actually need to do is go to my mobile device and I need to scan this QR code and then follow along with the steps. So now we're going to move on to a recording from my phone. So I'm going to start recording on my iPhone and follow along with these steps. So I've just scanned the QR code and you can see here it's bringing me now to download this app. It says IoT device management. So I'm going to go ahead and press download. Now, when I download this, it's going to redirect me to download an app called Test Flight. So I need to download this Test Flight app first and then I can actually join the beta because this is a beta app, which is the IoT device management app. So I'm going to go and view this in the App Store. I'm going to go ahead and download that app. And then once that app is downloaded, I'll be right back. So as you can see now, I've downloaded the test flight app. So what I'm going to do is start testing with the IoT device management app. So when I do this, it brings me to test flight. I'm just going to allow it to send me notifications. I'm going to press continue and then see it shows the IoT device management app. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. And then once that's installed, this will just show up as an icon on your home screen. You can press on that and then we'll follow along from there. All right, so I'm now in the IoT device management app. Notice it says from the developer gives me the fact that this is kind of a beta application. So I'm going to go ahead and press next. I can share my feedback with the developer. OK, that's fine. And then here we go. We have the Create Toya IoT platform account. So what this is asking me to do is create a cloud project, which is what we actually just did. Authorize the API products. We've done that already. Configure the project. We've done that. And then finally navigate to the project QR code, which we just did. So now what we can do is press get started. So now what I can do is scan the QR code that's in front of me here. When I scan that QR code, it associates that with my project. So notice it now says coffee. And then I want to sign into my account with the username and password. So let me sign in and then I'll continue. All right, so I've just signed in. And to clarify here, the sign in information that you're going to use is the one that you created when you made your asset. So you're kind of signing into that asset, right? You're not signing in to the account you made in the very first step of the video. You're signing in with the credentials you just created when we were in that cloud project setup. So I've signed in now. I allowed the app to have access to all of the things it wanted to have access to. It wanted the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. It needs access to those things. So make sure you accept that. And now what I'm going to do is press into this main asset. So when I press into this main asset, you're going to see it says no assets found. And it will also say that we have no devices. Now it's asking me if I would like to let it use Bluetooth. So let's press yes. And now what I'm going to do is start connecting my devices. So to connect a device, you press add device. And then what you're going to do is click pair device. Now you should be able to automatically find the device if you're close enough to it. Now in this case, we are using this kind of Wi-Fi bridge. So that's the first thing that we're going to need to connect. So make sure that's plugged in and turned on and that you're close to that. So once that's on, what you should be able to do is go on auto scan here and it should actually be able to find this device for you. 
All right, so the Bluetooth bridge has officially been connected. You can see it says device added successfully. So I'm going to go ahead and press done. Now what I want to do is actually connect a device to this Bluetooth bridge. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my FingerBot, which remember is wireless, and it should start pairing and actually be able to find this Bluetooth gateway. So give it a second and let's see if we can find this device. All right, so my FingerBot has connected. This did take a few minutes to actually show up. The way I got it to connect was I turned my FingerBot on, then I went to my Bluetooth gateway and I pressed the button on it. That put it into pairing mode. There was a blue light that started flashing and then my FingerBot connected to it. I didn't need to do anything with the app and the FingerBot for it to connect. It just automatically connects to the bridge and then it showed up here. Now, if for some reason your FingerBot is not connecting, try turning the FingerBot on and off five times rapidly. That is supposed to put it into connection mode, although mine just automatically connected. Now, you obviously can look at the FingerBot documentation and the Bluetooth bridge documentation to see how to get it to connect, but mine connected, so we're all good. We will continue. All right, so you can see the FingerBot is here. So what I'm going to do is press on the three dots, and I'm just going to show you that this is kind of the interface that you get. So in this user interface that you see here, you can control the FingerBot and mess with a few of the settings for it. So just notice I have mine beside me, so you should hear it. If I turn it on, you can hear that the sound actually happens because, well, the uh, mechanical thing is moving. This is working. It is connected. So now what I want to do is bring us back to the computer, because since we've done this, our device is now connected to our asset. So within the main asset, you'll see that we have this bridge and we have this fingerbot. So now we'll actually be able to see these from our computer from the IoT Toya platform. So let's go back to the computer and check this out. So I've gone back to the platform here. You can see I'm in my coffee project and now both the FingerBot and the Bluetooth bridge have connected. Now, I did need to refresh the page for this to happen, but they are both connected. Now, one thing to note, if you do turn the FingerBot off, since it is a wireless device, you can just turn it off if you want. It's no longer going to be connected, right? It's going to have the status offline. But as soon as you turn it back on, it will automatically connect. You won't have to go through those same steps again. So now that we've done that with the app, we don't need to deal with the app anymore. We've already connected the device. We can now continue working strictly from the computer. So our FingerBot and our Bluetooth bridge are connected. We now see them on here and we can actually start writing some Python code. So the two things that we're going to want here related to these devices is the device ID. And actually, we just want the device ID of the FingerBot because there's nothing we really need to control related to the Bluetooth bridge. That's just the way that we're going to be able to control the FingerBot. OK, so what we need to do if we want to actually start writing some code here is we need to open up a Python file and we need to install the Toya SDK for Python. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I've just opened up a command prompt because I'm on Windows. If you are on Mac or Linux, you're going to open up terminal. And what you're going to do is type in the following command. You want pip3 install toya hyphen iot hyphen pi hyphen sdk. For some of you, pip3 won't work. If that's the case, you want to try pip. And if pip doesn't work, what you're going to want to try is python and then hyphen m pip install toya iot hyphen pi hyphen sdk. If that doesn't work, try this. So add the pip3. And finally, if that doesn't work, you're going to try Python 3 hyphen M pip3 install. And lastly, remove the three here on the pip and then try that. These are just all of the different variations of the command that you can try that hopefully will work for you. So in this case, we'll go pip3 install Toya IoT Pi SDK. You can see I already have this installed. And so the requirement is already satisfied. For you, however, it should have actually installed and now you have the SDK installed. So what we can do is start actually working with our devices and with the Toya SDK. So I'm going to close the terminal or command prompt here. I'm going to go into a new Python file. So I'm going to work in sublime text. Feel free to work in whatever editor that you want. And now what we're going to have to do is import the Toya SDK and then start actually connecting to our project and then being able to control our IoT devices. So the first thing we need to do here is import the Toya SDK. So we're going to say from and then Toya underscore IoT import. And then this is going to be Toya open API like that. Next, we're going to say from requests import get. You'll see why we need this in a minute. And sorry, this should be requests. Now, this module you may need to install as well. For some reason, I keep thinking that it's uh, it's built in, but you may need to install this with pip. So you would do the same thing we did before pip install and then requests like that. So if that doesn't work for you, just make sure you install it with pip in the same way that you installed the SDK previously. Then we are going to oops, 
import random. Let me just fix this here. And these last two modules, so random and request, we're going to use later. OK, so now that we have that, we need to fill in the following information. So I'm just going to copy some code in here like this. So we need to fill in our access ID, our access key, our endpoint, our username and our password. Now, the access ID and the access key are going to come from that main page of your project that I showed you previously in the video when we were setting up the project from the Toya IoT platform. Then this endpoint is going to be dependent on the region that you're using. In this case, I'm using the US region and so US works. But if you're using a different region, you're going to have to have a different kind of last two characters here. And you can go to this link, which I'll leave in the description and I'll go to now to show you uh, where you can actually find the correct endpoint. So let's open up this link here. And you can see that the endpoints are right here. So this is the China endpoint. This is the America endpoint, the American Azure endpoint, Europe, Europe, MS, India, so on and so forth. OK, so that is where you find the endpoint from. Notice that we're using the US one. OK, so we need to fill in that endpoint. Then we need our username and password. And the username and password are going to be the same username and password you used when you signed into that app on your phone. So the username and password are kind of the second username and password that we put in, the one that we used when we were setting up our project, not when we were creating our original account. Lastly, we're going to need our Fingerbot device ID. The device ID is the ID that we saw from the Toya platform that I said to pay attention to. So let's go here. This is the device ID that we need. So I'm actually going to copy this device ID and paste it here. Now, in my case, I don't really care if you see my device ID, but you shouldn't share this device ID. This should be something private as well as all of these four pieces of information. So what I'm going to do is kind of write a modified Python script that allows me to hide those pieces of information from you. But for you guys, if you want to keep it simple, you can just paste them in here. And let me just show you where those pieces of information are. So if we go back here and we go to overview, you should see that we have our when this loads our client ID and then our client secret uh, and our access secret. So the client ID again, it's fine if you see that for me, but you guys shouldn't make that available to everyone. And then the access key is something that I do need to keep hidden. OK, so I'm going to fill in these pieces of information, then I'll be right back. All right, so I've modified this Python code now such that I'm storing that secret information in a secret JSON file, reading in that file and then just using the appropriate key value pairs here to be able to actually access this information. You don't have to understand the modification that I made it just so that I hide this information from you while I am working. Now what we are going to do is we're actually going to connect to the Toya platform. So what we're going to do is say open API is equal to and then this is going to be Toya with a capital T if I could type properly open API and we're going to pass the endpoint we want to connect to our access ID and our access key. Then what we are going to do is log in to the API. So we're going to say open API dot login. We're going to log in with our username and our password. So once we've done this, if we run the program, we shouldn't see any errors, assuming this information is correct and we have the correct endpoint. If you do see an error, then you need to double check this information information, sorry, and make sure it's all correct. So let's run this. Notice it just says finished. We didn't get any errors. That is good. That means we are all good. OK, so now what we need to do is we need to be able to control our finger. Bump. So the simplest way to do this is to send a post request to a specific endpoint on the API. Now I'm going to show you how we can actually find this endpoint and how we can find what information we should send to this endpoint. So we're going to go back to our web browser here. We're going to go to the Toya IoT platform and we're going to go to the API Explorer. Now, the API Explorer allows us to explore all of the different API calls that we can make and all of the different commands that we can send to control different devices that we have. So actually, sorry, before we go to this, I need to go back and I need to go to my devices and I need to copy the device ID of my Fingerbot because we're going to need that. So let's get the device ID of the Fingerbot here. Let's go back to the Explorer. And what we're going to do is go here on the left side and we are going to find the industrial general device and then this should be control. OK, so you're going to look for industrial general device control. Then you're going to look for get the instruction set of the device. And what you're going to do is paste in here the device ID. 
Now, what this is going to do is send a request to an endpoint that will give you all of the information about the device that you need. So let's submit the request and notice it shows you the request that was sent and then it gives you the result. So it says the category of this device is the following. These are the different commands that you can send to this device. So we have a timer command. We have a mode command. We have an arm down percent, a click sustain time and arm up percent. And then we have the switch. Now the switch is the one that we're going to focus on. But if you look here, it shows you how to use all of these different commands. So it says the code for the command is this. The name is this. The type is this. And this is the values that we're expecting. In this case, the only two acceptable values are click and switch. We have arm down percent. This accepts an integer. The minimum is 51. The maximum is 100 percent. You know, you can go through and read how all of these work. So now that we've done this and we know the commands that we can send, what we can do is actually send one of these commands and test it and see if it works before we start writing the code. So we can go to send commands here. We can paste in our device ID. We can paste in the code, which was switch and then the value, which in this case will be true or false. So what I'm going to do is submit this request. And then as you can likely hear, the fingerbot is actually going on and off because, well, we told it to switch. And when you type switch, really what that means is go down and come back up. It changes depending on the mode that the fingerbot is in. But that's the basics. When you send this, you should see that the fingerbot reacts to this command. And then you get a result that says true and success. Now, notice if I try to send, say, like 34 here as the value and I submit this request, we get a error code. It says the type is incorrect and it tells me that this was false. This was not successful. So you will get valid error messages if the commands that you're sending are not correct. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to go back to my code here. So I'm now going to show you how we can do this from code rather than doing it from the API Explorer. So the, what we need to do here is we need to write the following open API dot post because we're going to send a post request and then I need to find the URL that I want to actually send this post request to. So the way I do that is I can go to the API Explorer and I can look at this sample post request here. So notice it says HTTPS open API dot US dot com. And then this is the part that I'm looking for V1. IOT hyphen three devices. This is the URL of my device. And then I have slash commands. So what I want to do is copy this extension of the URL. So kind of the path right off of the base URL. I don't want the base URL and I want to paste that in a string right here. Now, what I also need to do is just make sure I have this uh, leading slash here and I'm actually going to replace this. So the hard coded device ID with the variable that I have, which is fingerbot device ID. And then I'm going to turn this into an F string such that this automatically gets embedded in the string. If you're not familiar with F strings, these are available in Python version 3.6 and above, and they allow you to embed a variable inside of a string inside of curly braces. So now what I can do is send a post request to this URL right here. And then what I need to send is some commands. And the commands that I'm going to send are going to be in the format that was specified from the API Explorer. So what I can do is I'm going to make a variable here called commands, and this is going to be equal to a dictionary. This is kind of going to represent JSON, and this is going to be commands colon and then a list of the commands that I want to send. Now, the command that I want to send is the following. I want to send the code, which is going to be a uh, switch. And then I want to send the value, which is going to be true. All right. So these are the commands that I want to send. This is the format in which you send the commands. You can find that from the documentation, which I'll link in the description. And then what you do is you simply put this right here. Commands. So just make sure it follows this format commands. You then have a list and inside of here you have a dictionary with the commands that you want to send. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to save and I'm going to run this code and see if I get any errors or if this is working. All right. So after running this code, nothing was happening and I was curious why nothing was happening, and especially why we weren't getting any error messages. And the reason for that is, first of all, we're not printing out the result of this command or sorry of this request. And also we have the wrong type here for our command. I put in the string true. I need to actually put in the Boolean value true like that. 
Anyways, what I'm going to do is show you how we can actually see what the result of this is. So what we can do is just say result is equal to that. And then we can simply print out the results like this. So we actually see what the result of this request is. So let's go ahead and try this now and see if it works this time. OK, so it says result true success true. And that means the finger bot should indeed go off. So let's run this one more time and let's see. So there you go. The finger bot has gone off. It is indeed working. And if you want to look at the other ways to control the finger bot, then what you can do is go back to that API Explorer and look at the different commands. However, now what I'm going to show you how to do is connect the light strip. And then I'm going to show you how we can control the light strip based on the web. So this is simply controlling the finger bot. Now we'll do something that allows us to control a light strip. That one's a little bit more fun. And I almost forgot in terms of actually making this work in terms of brewing coffee or, you know, having some user input before it triggers the finger bot. What you could do is something like this X equals input, you know, press enter to brew. And then you could run this program, you would press enter. And then after you press enter it would actually run this command. And then assuming you have this hooked up to the coffee machine, they do come with little adhesive pads that you can use to stick it to something. That's what I've done to stick it to my coffee machine. Then you would press enter and it would well start brewing the coffee. And I'll actually show you a video of that happening right now. All right, so now as promised, I'm going to show you how to control a light strip. So I've mounted a light strip around the trim of the entrance to my closet. I'll show kind of some brief photos or videos of what that looks like right now. But regardless, you're going to connect the light strip in the same way that you connected the finger bump. So you're going to plug it in, make sure it's on, and then you're going to go to the same app that we were in before. You are going to go to auto scan. It's going to find the light strip for you. You're going to connect the light strip and then it will be added to your Toya platform account. So I'm going to go and connect my light strip and then I will show you how we can control it. All right. So you can see that my RGB strip is now connected. It's associated with the main asset and this is its device ID. So in a similar fashion to what we did before, I'm going to look at the different commands that I can send to this light strip. So let's go to the get instruction set. Let's pass the ID of this light strip and let's submit this request. All right. So notice these are all of the different commands that we have. We have switch LED. We have temp value. We have colored data. And the one that I want to look at is colored data. Now, the reason I want to look at this one is because I want to be able to change the color of my light strip based on the temperature outside. So what I'm going to do is have it. So this script is actually going to figure out where I'm located, determine the temperature there, and then change the color of my light strip based on the temperature outside. So you can customize this in any way that you want. I'll just show you basically kind of how this works. But notice that you actually update the temperature or the color of this uh, LED strip using HSV, not RGB. So HSV is I think it's hue saturation and something else, although I could be completely wrong on what that stands for. My editors will, will pop up what HSV means on the screen in case I'm wrong there. Regardless, we are going to use the color data code and we're going to send a JSON object that has HSV as the three attributes or kind of arguments in it. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to go here, going to grab the device ID. And I'm going to go back to sublime text and I'm just going to remove some of this code here. So I'm going to comment this out because I no longer need this and I'm going to change uh, or make a new variable. Actually, we'll call this light strip underscore device underscore ID and I'll make this equal to the device ID of my light strip. Now I'm going to show you how we can control the light strip, which is very similar to this. In fact, what I can actually do is copy this code. I probably should have just left it here. So I'll copy this, comment it out. And now the code that I want to send is not going to be switch. It's going to be color in the Canadian way underscore. I think it was data. Let's go back and check that. Uh, let's see here. It is it is color data. OK, great. And then for the value, I want to send a JSON object that has H colon something comma S colon something comma V colon something and we'll fill in those values in a minute. OK, and then rather than the finger bot device ID, I'm going to send the light strip device ID. 
Okay, so now I need to pick some colors that I want to send. So let's just send H of like 200, S of, let's just go with 100, and V will go with 100. I'm not sure what color that's going to be, but we can just send this and test and see if it works. All right, so now just like we were able to control the finger bot, this should control the light strip for us. Obviously, you're just going to have to take my word for it that the light strip is working. I don't have a camera like pointed at that right now that's recording, so just trust me but let's run this and let's see what we get now. Okay, so it says result true, success true, and the light strip has actually changed colors. Now, one thing I'll quickly show you here is how we can turn the light strip on and off because if the light strip is off and you change the color, well, it's not really gonna do anything, right? So let's do this. So let's go here and let's change from color data to, I think it's switch underscore LED. I believe that's the value. And then for value here, I'm going to pass true. Okay. Uh, and we need a list. I guess I deleted all that. Okay. So let's fix that. And now we will just send this command again, and then we will change the color. All right. So let's run this. And hopefully this time the light strip will turn on and then it will change color. And yes, it did. Perfect. Okay, so everything is working with that. Now what we want to do is make it so that we change the color based on the weather and when we need to figure out the weather. So in order to actually determine the weather, what we first need to know is the longitude and latitude of our current location. Now, unfortunately, there's no way for us to just grab that information easily. What we actually need to do in the following order is we need to get our public IP address, send our public IP address to Toya. It will then return to us the longitude and latitude of that public IP address. Then we will use the longitude and latitude to get the weather of our current area. So that is what we need to do. I'm going to show you how we can do that. So the first thing we need to do is get our public IP. Now, this is why we imported the request module, because we're going to send a request to a website that can just tell us what this public IP is. It's very simple to do this. So we're going to say public underscore IP is equal to, and this is going to be get, and we are going to retrieve from the following website, HTTPS colon slash slash API dot, and this is IPify dot org and then we're going to say dot txt now this will return to you your public ip address do not share this with anyone i am not going to share my public ip address with you because well i don't want you to know where i live because obviously you can access the longitude and latitude from that. next what we are going to do is we're going to set up a function i'm just going to call this get weather and this function will return to us what the weather is. So I'm just going to clear these commands. I'm actually going to clear this one here and just move this one down a bit so we have some space. And inside of here, I'm going to start writing what we need to actually get our location. So let's go to the website here and let's go to our API Explorer. And I'm going to show you how we can find the URL that we need to send the request to to get our location. So notice we have this LBS here. This is location based services. So location based services, if we press on this here, it should give us the different things that we can use to get our location. So in this case, we want to get our location based on our IP. So we'll go get IP location and then let's just send a random public IP. So let's say random public IP. OK, random IP generator. So let's just generate the IP. OK, let's grab this and let's just put this in here and let's see what this request structure looks like. OK, so there you go. It gives us a result. It gives us the continent code, the country, the latitude and the longitude. So this is what the request will look like or sorry, the result will look like. And this is the endpoint that we want to send this request to. And this is the format that we want to send it. In. So I'm going to copy all of this right here and I'm going to paste this as my location underscore URL. So location underscore URL is going to be equal to this. Now, what I'm going to do is make this an F string and for where it says IP equals, I'm going to replace this with my public underscore IP. So now what we should actually be able to do is send a request to this URL and get our longitude and latitude based on whatever our public IP is. So what I can do now is I can grab our location so I can say that the location is equal to open API. And this is going to be dot get this time, not get not dot post, because we're just sending a get request and we're going to send this to the location URL and we're going to grab from this the result. Now, since I don't want to print this out because I don't want you to see what my location is, I'm just going to show you from here. 
Notice the first key in the result here is called result. That's what we want. And then inside of result, we want the latitude and the longitude. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that my lat and lawn is equal to location at and then this is latitude. I think I spelled that correctly and then location at and then longitude like that. Now, it's very possible that I spelled this wrong. Longitude. I think it's just that actually. Uh, let's check my spelling because I'm not very confident here. OK, latitude. Let's copy that and longitude. OK, looks like I spelled them correctly. OK, so let's paste that. OK, all good. All right. So now I have my latitude and longitude. So now that I have the latitude and longitude, what I want to do is get the weather. So now I need to show you how we get the weather. So let's go back to the API Explorer. This time we're going to go to our weather service, not the LBS, and we're going to get the current weather. Notice we can also get the seven day or seven get seventh weather forecast. I guess that's supposed to be seven day weather forecast. All right. So here we can pass a latitude and longitude and it gives us the weather. So let's just generate a random latitude and longitude. Uh, OK, uh, I guess I can just put them in. I can go like, you know, 80.0 and 80.0. OK, so let's just submit that and let's see what we get. All right, so this is what we get. We get a result that has air quality coordinate and then the current weather. Now we're looking for current weather and we want to know the temperature. So what we're going to look for is result current weather and then temperature. Those are the keys that we need to access from the result. And let's look at the API call here. So notice this is the 2.0 API that we're calling, not the 1.0. So that's important. So I'm going to copy this just like we did for the previous one. And now I'm going to say the weather underscore URL is equal to an F string. And we're going to replace the latitude and longitude numbers with lat and long from the step previously. OK, now that we have that, we're going to again send a get request to this URL. So we're going to say that the weather is equal to open API dot get. This is going to be our weather URL. And then we want to get the result. We want to get the what was it? I guess it's current underscore weather. And then we want the temp. So let's see if that looks correct here. If I go here, yeah, we have current weather and we have temp. Nice. OK, so now this should give us the weather. So what I can do is actually return the weather and I can now comment all of this out and start our program by just calling this weather function and just printing what its result is. So I'm going to print get underscore weather and just see if this is accurate and if this is working. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and let's see what we get. So we get 25.6. That is the correct temperature where I am right now. Maybe that gives you guys some type of hint where I live, but hopefully not too much. And anyways, that is the weather. So what I'm going to do now is just store this in a variable. So weather equals get weather. If this isn't working for you, what you can try doing is actually printing out the location variable right here. So printing out the result and seeing what it looks like. The reason I'm not printing it again is because I don't want you guys to know where I live because it shows the longitude and the latitude or what the public IP address is. Nice. So now that we have the current weather, we can actually adjust the temperature or the color of the light strip based on what this weather is. So what I'm going to do is copy in some temperatures, or copy in some temperatures, copy in some colors, sorry, in HSV format. Now, I just went to an HSV color picker and came up with these different variables right here, these different colors. You can go do that yourself or you can just copy the source code, which I will link in the description of this video. Anyways, these are some different colors that we can use. So what I'm going to do is set up kind of an if else statement structure that allows me to select a color based on the current temperature. So I want it to be darker if it is colder and I want it to be more light and kind of like more red if it's warmer, right? So dark blue will be if it's really, really cold and then red will be if it's really, really warm. So I'm going to say color is equal to none. And I'm going to say if the weather is less than negative 20, then I want the color to be equal to dark blue. L if the weather is less than negative 10, then I want the color to be equal to light blue. And then I'll say L if the color, sorry, not the color, the weather is less than zero, then I want the color to be equal to white. 
L if the color, I keep saying color, L if the weather is less than, let's go with 10, then I want the color to be orange. L if the weather is less than, let's go with 20, then I want the color to be equal to red. Okay, so I think I used all my colors there, dark blue, light blue, white, orange, yellow, red. Did I miss yellow? I did miss yellow. Okay, so let's do yellow as the last one. L if weather is less than 30, then color equals yellow. All right, so really all this is going to do is just set the temperature equal to, you know, the appropriate colors based on what it is. So if it's less than negative 20, dark blue. If it's not less than negative 20, but it's less than negative 10, light blue, so on and so forth, you guys get the idea. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a command, specifically this command right here, to adjust the light strip based on whatever this color is. So rather than now having the value be equal to this, it will be equal to this color variable. And then it should just send this request and we'll adjust the temperature or color of the light strip. All right, so now that we have this, let's test this code and see if it's working. So let's run it. And OK, so it says this is not supported. OK, the reason we're getting this error is because we did not convert our weather variable to a float right now. It is a string. And so what I need to do is convert the return value here to a float. So the float of get weather. So now if I run this, it should work. So let's go ahead and run this. And when I run this, it does indeed turn the light strip on and change its color. Now, I know you guys can't see it, so you just have to trust me and believe me. But if you're running this for yourself and you do have a light strip, you will see that this does indeed work. All right. So I think with that, that is going to end this tutorial and this video. Hopefully this gave you a general idea of how to work with the Internet of Things and specifically the Toya IoT platform. Thank you again to Toya for sponsoring this video. They really are a great company. They're super flexible when they were working with me, sent me a bunch of different cool products to test out and really allowed me to kind of experiment with the Internet of Things. This is such a cool thing. The fact that you can just write these really simple Python scripts or scripts in really any language and control physical hardware devices. It's also really seamless and easy to connect them to your home network, as you saw in this video. And really everything we did here, although it might have taken a fair amount of time, I was walking through and explaining it is super simple and probably just the easiest way you really can go about uh, actually interfacing with hardware devices. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Make sure to check out Toya from the link in the description. And I will see you again in another YouTube video.